of the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul not only desired <clears throat> to come to the, to the church at Rome with this, with this message, with this word, he was determined to bring the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the saints. These were, was, this was to the church. He wanted to bring this message to the church because he knew something about the gospel. He knew that the Holy Spirit had joined the gospel with the blessings of God. That this, the, the, the gospel message was a blessing. It was the showing forth the favor of God, the, the matter of benefits and help and aids. And not only did it have the blessings of the gospel, it had the fullness of the blessings of the gospel, abundant blessings, overflowing blessings, even everlasting blessings, the blessings that come from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And since God's gospel is an everlasting gospel, the fullness of the blessings of the gospel of Jesus Christ continue into the everlasting as well. Now this was do done by the apostle for, these, for this church at Rome merely for informational benefits. See, this church was going to have to endure deadly persecutions very soon. And so the apostle was getting them ready for them to strengthen them to endure and overcome all that was gonna come upon them. And the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ was that provision for them to endure through all of this. Now the gospel reveals that God is a God of blessing. He would rather bless than curse. He would rather gather than scatter. He would rather build up than tear down. So he raised up his holy prophets and sent them with this message about himself and what these blessings would entail that the people would receive. Ezekiel 34 is one of the many texts that talk about this, this matter of God's desire to bless his people. This is such a declaration in the scripture. But actually it is a wonderful testimony of the person and the work of God's dear son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In Ezekiel 34, I'm not going to read the whole the text here, but focus on these, on these points that, that relate to this, to this work in the very person of our Lord Jesus Christ and God's desire to, to save his people. Starting in verse 22, he says, I will save my flock. This is a, de this is a declaration of God himself. I will save my flock. And here's, here's some of the provisions of that, of that being saved. They shall no more be a prey. They shall no more be ravaged by enemies. They shall no longer be overcome by them. They shall no longer be devoured by them. The gospel reveals about this, this one who is desiring and has God's people as a prey, and that is the devil. He is the one that is seeking about whosoever he may devour. God says, I'm gonna make a provision that my people shall no more be a prey. And how he's going to accomplish this? Verse 23 says, I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. Now, it was already spoken last night that he's not talking about the psalmist David. For David had already died and was buried, and his sepulcher was still among the people. He was talking about a greater one than David, one who would, who would feed his people unto eternal life and guide them and lead them in it. I, the Lord, will be their God. See, this is the result or, uh, of, of, of the work of Jesus Christ. And he shall be, a, my servant shall be a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. So we're talking about the shepherd ruler, the shepherd king. Amen. And this is, the, this is the very person of Jesus Christ as, as declared in the gospel. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and I lay down my life for the sheep. I know my sheep and they know me. They hear my voice and they follow me. And this will be a result of a covenant of peace 
that God had made with his son and with his people. And here's some of the effects now of this, of this covenant. He says, I will make them, them a blessing. Them, the people, I'll make them a blessing. Not just pour blessings upon them, around them, I'll make them a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. Whose season? The prince season. This is his reign. And during his reign, he was going to pour down these blessings. This shower of blessings was going to come down in his season. I will cause this. God says, I will cause this shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing. See, the, the, the prophets were, 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 were being sent to, to, to reveal this truth about God's Christ, about his prince, about his shepherd. And they were, they were talking about this matter of, of joining this truth about the, the gospel with the blessings of God. Malachi had something to say about this as well. He says, the windows of heaven shall be open and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. See, we're talking about fullness of blessings here. Nothing's going to be left out. Nothing is left out, and the apostle even said that. I, will not leave, I did not leave anything out of that message which I brought unto you. See, the prophets had a, had a ministry, and their ministry was to speak that there would be a time of blessing coming, that there would be. That's what he said. There shall be showers of blessing. The apostle Peter spoke of this, of their, of their ministry as being, they spake of the grace that should come unto you. But it's the gospel that declares that now is the time of the reception of the blessings. Today is the day of salvation. The gospel announces that we do truly partake of this fullness of God's blessings. We do now drink the cup of blessing as we commune with the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, with his body and with his blood. They're announcing that these blessings are received and obtained in Christ Jesus. And it is because of Christ Jesus that we do partake of these benefits. It says we abide in him, and only because of Jesus and who he truly is and what he accomplished through his death, burial, and resurrection from the dead that the fullness of the, of the blessing of the gospel is being poured out upon his people and received by them. That's the announcement of the gospel. The day has come, and brethren, we're living in that day when the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ is able to be received by God's people. Amen. See, the, God, the gospel declares that God is the God of blessing and that there is a people a peculiar people, a specific people that is highly favored of God to receive and to utilize the fullness of the blessing. Now this, this them from that Ezekiel talked about, he says, I'll make them a blessing. Well, the gospel reveals who is them. Who are these them that the prophet was speaking about? Well, the gospel says it's those that are in Christ Jesus. The ones that are in Christ Jesus are the ones that God has blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now this all comes forth from the, a determination and a purpose of God. This was God's determination to bless his people. He had purpose to do so, but he also is a God of intent. There's a reason for pouring out the fullness of his, of his blessings upon his people. One of the things is that the largeness and the magnitude of the fullness of these blessings cannot be contained only in this life and in this world. God's is an eternal purpose. And the largeness and magnitude of what Jesus accomplished in his humiliation and death, it's way too small a thing to be only utilized in this life and in this world. It has to be, it has to be greater than that. And, and it is. We are given these blessings in order, really, in order to be utilized in the world to come and in the ages to come. God's work is a vast work. It's a staggeringly large work. It's an eternal 
an everlasting work, and he hasn't hid it from the minds and the hearts of his people, of those who believe the record that God has given of his son. It is proclaimed, it is made known, God's intent for this, the purpose of the, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it is the gospel that reveals the magnitude of God's intent and eternal, eternal purpose in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that is, stated in Ephesians 3.19, that ye might be filled with the fullness of God. Consider that. This is what God is doing in salvation, that ye might be filled with the fullness of God. Now, the ye that is spoken of here in, in this Ephesians text refers to the entirety of the church, not a select group. It's to the entirety of the church, the whole of the body of Christ. It's all the saints, that all the saints would be filled with the fullness of God. The church is made up of many members, each being a vessel of mercy being prepared for glory. And for the church, both individually and collectively, to be filled with the fullness of God, there must be a source of supply, a divine source of supply, in order to fill the entirety of the church. And that is the good news of the gospel, that there is a provision for this filling. It's in Christ Jesus, and we are being filled with the fullness of God by the gospel. The gospel is that provision of God, that we might be filled with the fullness of God. Now the Apostle Paul was given the ministry to make these things known. He was given to declare the mystery of Christ. This understanding was given to him by the Lord Jesus himself, and it was that he, that this Jesus of Nazareth was, being the Son of God, he is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And he was sent by the Father to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself and to raise from the dead by the glory of the Father and to be exalted to the right hand of the throne of God. And brethren, this is no small accomplishment. This is an epochal working of God our Father. In other ages past, this saving truth about Jesus was not made known unto the sons of men. But now that Jesus has died, now that Jesus has risen from the dead and has been set down at the right hand of the majesty on high, the word of the truth of the gospel is being made known. It's being declared, it's being announced, and it's been revealed unto God's and our Lord's apostles and his prophets by the Spirit. Now the good news for us is that the apostles' reception of this understanding of the mystery of Christ was not for them alone. The apostle was given grace to minister to the sons of men. Amen. And that included the Gentiles. Amen. Those things that the apostle Paul received of the Lord, he was faithful to declare them unto the sons of men. And so the Apostle Paul journeyed throughout the land with this message, to preach Christ. And there were times that he was encouraged, times that he was encouraged greatly while he, while he journeyed through this land. And that was times when he received the testimony of a people who had faith, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. who were living in the power of a new and changed life. And these good reports compelled the apostle to action. It compelled him to pray for them. When he, when he heard of people that had faith, he, was, he would pray for them. According to the will of God, according to his eternal purpose, he made mention of them in all his prayers. Praying for them that they would be filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. He prayed that they would be filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ. He prayed that they would be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. He prayed that they would increase and grow and be enlarged. Yeah. Unto ye all being filled with the fullness of God. 
Now, for this fullness to occur, they had to hear and they had to believe and receive the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, something else we want to make known here. Now, we know that the apostle did desire to come unto such ones, to meet with them, and to fellowship with them purposefully. Stated in Romans 1, 9, that I might impart unto you some spiritual gift. And there was, a, there was an intent of the apostle of imparting that spiritual gift. To this end, that ye may be established. That you might continue on. That you might be strengthened to endure. Amen. And Paul would accomplish this through the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul knew something else that was revealed to him. Even though they truly were new creatures in Christ Jesus, they were in need of a continuing divine resource and help. They would need such things to help them to continue in their good fight of faith, laying hold on eternal life. They, he knew that the gospel was not only vital to begin the good fight, but also that they would finish it. Paul knew that there would be times when the saints' knees would be feeble and their hands would hang down and they needed to be lifted up. They knew that there, were time, there would be times when grievous wolves would enter in among them, not sparing the flock. And in such times it was vital that they be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Amidst all these trials they were to endure and persecutions and times of being cast down and troubled, yet they must go on to perfection. The Apostle Paul ministered and preached with this end view in mind. Now he did remember the poor of his day, the poor saints at Jerusalem, and he took up a collection to help these poor saints in Jerusalem with their earthly needs. But see, his, his, his mind and his heart's desire was focused on the end. This going on to perfection, see, has more to do with the world to come than this world and this life. And his ministrations had mainly to do with getting God's people ready for the return of Jesus. For the day of judgment, that they would pass through the day of judgment without the smell of smoke upon them. He was determined to ready them for the life in the world to come and in the ages to come. His main concern for the church was what would happen to them after the day of judgment. And the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ was that which prepared them and ready them for this. For this cause, to this end, the apostle desired to come unto them in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ, as he also knew that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So in all this, this is, this is, this is revealing unto us. And to us, see, this, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a meaning for us as well in this. The testimony of all, that there's a needfulness for the te of this gospel to be preached and to be heard and to believed by the people of God in all ages, in all nations, in tongues, in peoples, in tribes. There is this need for it to be continued to be preached and to be heard that the people might first believe and they might continue to believe even unto the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's through the proclamation of the word of the gospel that men do hear and believe and continue to believe unto salvation, unto new creatureship, unto newness of life. We are indeed born again by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. However, that new creature must not only be maintained, he must grow, he must be increased and enlarged in order that they might be filled with the fullness of God. And so Paul preached the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they would be increased and not diminished. So you take yourself away from the preaching of the gospel 
And don't be surprised if you're diminished rather than being increased. Now, Jesus opened up the reality of this vital continuing need for the new man, continuing in the word of God, when he said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Just as the earthly man needs earthly sustenance to live and grow and increase, so does the spiritual man need spiritual sustenance to live and grow and increase. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is that provision of God to accomplish this, and it's, being, and it's being accomplished in Christ Jesus. Now again, we're talking about the church here, that this ministration is to the church, to the members of the household of God, to the body of Christ, those that are in Christ Jesus. They need to hear. They need to hear the gospel preached. They need to believe the gospel. They need to trust in that which God is doing. That's what he has purposed to do and what he is accomplishing. The church needs to hear about God's beloved son, our Lord Jesus Christ, of who he truly is and what he is doing. He, he, this, this, is, this, is, this is their nourishment. This is their increase. This is their, in, their strength. They need to hear that he has been exalted to the right hand of the throne of God and that he is ruling and reigning now. And it doesn't matter if they've heard it before doesn't matter how many times they've heard it. The ones that Jesus sends to the church will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. They continue to preach the truth as it is in Christ Jesus. Even the apostle Paul was not immune from this need of the provision of the gospel. Yes, he did in desire to impart the spiritual gift to the faithful saints at Rome, but there was something more he desired. And he wanted to receive something from them. That I may be comforted, the apostle said. When he comes to Rome, that I may be comforted, it was his desire. Together with you, by the mutual faith of both you and me. See, this is being declared unto all's hearing that there is no exception among God's people that they can go on to perfection apart from their continued hearing, believing, and receiving the full blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. See, to the believer in Christ Jesus, the gospel is good news. At its core, the gospel is full of good news, being abundant with blessing. It is likened to the storehouse of God, being of a never-ending dimension and scope. And when it's opened up through preaching, the blessings come out in abundance even from the hand of the Lord. See, the, the, the gospel blesses us in the understanding that the holy, holy, holy God has devised, devised means to judicially and righteously pour out a blessing upon those who were once defiled before him, who were once alienated from him and his enemies, and were without God and without hope in the world, being dead in trespasses and sins. But God is the declaration of the good news of the gospel. Even when we were dead in sins, hath he raised us up together with Christ. By grace, by divine provision, by divine blessing, by the grace of God and by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved through faith. And not of ourselves, it is a gift of God. Amen. It is a blessing of God. It is a benefit of God. Salvation in all its glory, in all its provisions, in all its privileges is a blessing of God. And they are directed specifically to usward who believe. Amen. Now the gospel reveals the preeminent one, God's beloved son, our Lord Jesus Christ, himself being the means of blessing. As the scripture saith, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning you, every one of you, from your iniquities. God raised up his son. God chose his son because he would not fail nor be discouraged. God upheld his son in all that he would do and say. 
God was the one who put his spirit upon him, and then he sent him out. He sent him to you. Purposefully, with God's eternal purpose in mind, and that is to bless you. To bless you. God sent his son. He raised up his son, and he sent him to you to confer benefits upon you. God sent forth, he raised up his son and sent him forth to show his favor <coughs> towards you. And he did it through Jesus Christ our Lord. God sent Jesus to not only take away your sin, but the sins of the whole world. Now this, this turning away of our iniquities, from our iniquities, is the apex of blessing. For from it come all other blessings. Jesus' death established a most solid and everlasting foundation from which God is able to righteously, to righteously and justly pour out his blessings upon all them that believe in Jesus Christ and that they continue to abide in him. Now this turning away of us from our iniquities begins with the forgiveness of sins and our iniquities. In Christ, the gospel declares that he hath truly removed our transgressions from us as far as the east is from the west. So far, that's how far they've been removed from us. But this blessing goes even further. We're talking about the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that fullness declares that he has not only forgiven our sins, he has turned us from them, which means he's taken away our appetite and our desire to sin. This is the work of, of our Lord Jesus Christ in the, fulfilling, in the fulfilling of that promised blessing that God spoke about through his holy prophets. Remember what he said? This is the Lord speaking. I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and I'll give them a heart of flesh. A new heart also will I give them, and a new spirit will I put within them. The gospel is announcing God did this when he raised up his son and he sent him to bless you. And the gospel declares that you are now free from the bondage of sin. And you are dead indeed unto sin, but you're alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is an effectual working. The gospel announces this is what's occurring. And then now, God, this, is, this is something that God desired to do from the beginning. And he began to speak about it often and over and over again throughout his scripture. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute iniquity, and whose spirit is no guile. Blessed are all they that put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. See, over and over and over again, he's, this is what God's desire was to do. And in, in the Lord from heaven, when he came, he opened up the fullness of that blessing. He gave substance to that fullness when he said <clears throat> things like this. Upon these blessed ones, Jesus declared, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. They shall inherit the earth. They shall be filled. They shall see God. They shall be called the children of God. Now, the fullness of the blessings of a gospel of Jesus Christ not only benefits and enables the saints in this life, it reaches into and continues on into the ages to come and into the world to come. Where it's declared in Revelation 19, 9, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. These are the true sayings of God. And so I exhort you, brethren, <laughs> to take hold, to, re to hear, to receive, to believe, to walk in the truth of the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because those who, who, are, who say that they receive these things, they believe them, they take hold of them, they're new, and they have new thoughts, new, new ways, and they say new things to the glory of God. So then, I'll finish with this. To those who have received and believed the, the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ, let them shout for joy. Let them be glad. 
that favor my righteous cause, saith the Lord. Yea, let them continually say, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servants.